Hello party peeps, I'm going to do a full settle instructional multiple hours here on YouTube over the course of the next weeks. It's YouTube, so it's completely free. This will be episode one. However, I will add a PayPal me link down here below in the description. It says De Grosse Presto, this is my PayPal me link. So if you like what you see, if you want to see more, if you hit a move in competition that I show you here, or hit it on your favorite trading partner and you feel like saying thank you, just leave a little tip on PayPal me. But now, let's go. <laughs> the question that I get asked the most whenever I teach the cell in seminars or in class is what do I do with my legs? And let's look at a few leg configurations here and just note this is not about breaking. Okay, you can break someone with any leg position I'm going to show you right here. Okay, people think there are is this magic leg position where I can break her and the, the other stuff is shit. That's not true. For breaking, it's much more about the mechanics and you can achieve that specific mechanics with every position, uh, any position I'm going to show you right now. This is more about when do I use which, what are the pros, what are the cons. I can break someone with any of those. Okay, so that being said, the most basic one, this is when the saddle was new, what everybody did is just trying your legs inside here. Okay, I got good control of the inside space, okay? I got some kind of close wedge, so I'm really holding tight onto the leg. And remember with the saddle, we always want to be hip to hip as close as possible, and I want her knee deep inside my knee line. Okay? As soon as this knee slips out, my saddle is gone. And this would be one of the first cons here, if she manages to bring her hand here, push my knee, it's really hard for me to, to get a good bite here, okay? Because I have no control over her knee, I have no control over her hip, okay? This is just more of, of a first stage thing, okay? That being said, if I get the heel here, I can break her, no problem. Okay? The good thing about this, however, is it's really hard for her to counter pummel and to counter take because what she wants to do most of the times, if I flare my knees, yeah, she brings this foot in, she collects my leg, and now she can start using the text of her own. So this is really good to prevent all this counter pumping stuff, and if I get control over the secondary leg, which I always want to do, this position is good as well, because this, this is still free, I can use this now to go into other positions, and I think it's relatively safe. So, if you're new to the saddle, just play around with it. The, th the fact that it's hard for me to control her here might be good because you're really learning where to keep the pressure. Another bad thing about this, it's hard for me to expose her, okay, because this force is not really strong. There are other positions we are going over soon where it's much easier for me to expose the Next one would be the complete opposite of what we just did. This would be like this, flaring my knees wide open. Okay? The good thing about this, and this is actually a really good position, is I have a lot of pressure on her. Okay? If I collect this leg and I really am able to flare my knees, this will put a lot of pressure on her hip. It's hard for her to move. If she was a guy, I sometimes get a groin tap here because my shin is actually pressuring a, a, a bad spot here. Most of the times for this, you go, lose foot over foot, okay? If I go foot over foot here, I can apply much more pressure. And this, I mean, you don't see it, but I feel it right now. My hip is already pushing into her knee because I'm flaring uh, yeah, my knees. So here is some pressure, like side knee bar pressure on this knee. If I collect this one, I sometimes uh, can tap people just by using this pressure if they're new to leg locks, okay? So if I'm here, I can put much force into her leg, into her knees. This is my absolute favorite position for the saddle because I have so much control and so much pressure. And not only am I able to flare this knee out, but let's say I expose the heel, I can use this to bring the knee in. We will talk about this later. This is another really good way to break her and this is really versatile with foot over foot, okay? Just take the sole of your foot, put it on your own ankle here, and now I feel like I can flare and push with my hip, I can bring this knee in, 
if she wants to back up, it's really hard. I have really good control here. So this would be foot over foot with flaring the knees at the complete opposite of the triangle. It's a really good position. So play around with it. However, the con is it's really easy for her to be problem. Okay, so if you've got someone who knows what, what they're doing, as soon as I go here, they might start to try to repower. Yes, this is another thing. She can just push here and try to free her knee, but uh, the bigger danger is she repummels, she gets the legs, and we're going into the counter attacks. Again, if I have a secondary leg and she can't repummel, this uh, danger is gone. I can bring this high and even apply pressure on this to start to expose. So foot over foot with flat knees at start is a really good position. The next position is the so-called shoelace ashi. This is what uh, Denaha and Gordon call it. It's been around for a while, so I guess there will be other names that I just don't know. I don't really care. Um, and this is my outside leg here, is tucking under here. So this is why they call it the shoelace ashi, because here, this part of my foot comes under that shoes. She's sitting on my foot right now. Why is that good? Because it's really hard for her to access my leg. Okay, this is more or less safe. It's hard for her to repummel because there's no gap. Okay, I can take this, there's no foot lock, there's nothing. And another good thing is it's easy for me to stand up. Okay, from here you see my legs already in the correct position to come up here and heist and start passing. Okay, remember the saddle is not only a good leg locking position, but it's a really good controlling position and you can use it to take the back, to pass a guard. We are going to go over this yeah, in other episodes. But see, I really put pressure, it's hard to see, can we turn around? So, I take my shoelace and really put pressure here, okay? There has to be some force. This leg is pulling in, this is pushing into the other direction, this is some, some side force from, from left to right. This is really good control. If she wants to scoot out, she's stuck. And I can use this, if this leg isn't there, and start to flare her knee out. Okay. This is good for me to start exposing. So this is a really good position to control her, to expose her, and be safe. The bad thing about this, turn around here. The bad thing about this is, if I want to attack her secondary leg, I oftentimes use this foot to go into this kind of positions to, to put it here, okay? And here, yes, this foot is really stuck. And sometimes, if you want to go for a tech on the secondary leg, it's really hard to, to get this out. Because actually, I have to lift her up and bring this out. Okay, and you see this creates some kinds of gaps. She can use this to free a leg, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes you get stuck here, and she's really heavy on this foot and I feel like I can't go anywhere and I do not have this leg, I do not have this foot to try to aid my attack on the secondary leg. Okay, the next one, and this is really popular and really cool, but it's hard to get there, but if you're there it's really good, is the crisscross ashi. Okay, the crisscross ashi is this or this. Actually, if we go into this position, we're technically not in the cell anymore, but we're in 50-50. Because, see, the reap now was outside, this is a 50-50 position. That being said, in my opinion, this is not half as good as this. And we're going over why now. The 50-50 reap here is really good to expose her here. But you see now all this inside space in 50-50 is hers and she can start using this leg to counter me here, to, uh, not to counter, to, to push me away uh, and start to re-pummel and do all kinds of things. And of course she can attack my foot as well. The crisscross ashi eliminates all that because you see now this leg is controlling the inside space. So if she wants to grip fight here, I can hold her away with the leg or I can even go to the Dogland calls it the Tony Montana. I think there's another term because Tony Montana is actually something else. I don't care. I can even start doing some things like this. This would be one of the best leg locking positions. This is basically a backside double 50. So if she turns this way, you would see we're in a backside double 50. If you know what that is, you don't have to know it to finish her from here. If I'm able to not only use this leg to control the inside space, 
to grab this and pull this to the other side, there's not much you can do. Okay, the downside for the crisscross Ashi, there really is none, but it's really hard to get there. Okay, so let's see. We're doing it normal back step. I'm stepping in, I'm going to my saddle. So to transition to the crisscross Ashi from here, this is a lot of work. Okay, uh, the most common way is this. I take a saddle and we start slowly rolling. Now, the moment I'm here, see, this is where I can thread my leg through and switch my leg position. And if we roll, 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 we will end up in the crisscross ashi and get the start like this. So there's not really a downside to this other than it's hard to get there just from a, from a regular set. The last one I want to show you, there are a lot more, but the last one I, I want to show you um, is the opposite of the shoelace ashi. You know the shoelace ashi is here. And the other one would be here. So this is really good to prevent her from pulling her knee back if I, yeah, if I want to attack the secondary leg, okay? Because here I can start attacking ankle locks like this or like that, or I can start bringing this to my hip and bring it over and all that kind of stuff. This is to expose the foot, or I can attack this leg. But her defense is actually really easy. She just has to retract her leg, and this can really be annoying as fuck. So you're here, and you start to attack this leg, and she's constantly pulling, and as soon as you leave it, she will bring the knee here, start spinning, and I lose everything, okay? So it's really important for me to keep control over, over this leg. And bringing my foot here and pulling this in makes it really hard for her to retract the leg. Okay, so even if I have no grips, just to take the knee, okay, this buys me so much time. And even if she starts <coughs> uh, bringing this down right away, it bought me enough time to maybe switch to this position. Or again, here she brings that down, but I use it already to come here or something like this. Okay, so if, if you're stuck and settled, you, you feel like you know, there's no way you expose or you can't turn or you can't do anything, you want to take the secondary leg, just add this. Okay, most of the times this is not so known, she will address this. And meanwhile, I can bring her leg over, attack here, so this is a really good position. Just remember, all of those positions are good for breaking if you got a good grip. Let's go over actual finishing breaking someone. So there are two ways to finish uh, Hero. It's the rotational finish and it's the hip pressure bridging finish, okay? The rotational one is where I take the foot and just start rotating. This is obviously really bad because you can hurt beginners and you won't finish more advanced people because if I start rotating here and she goes with a rotation, I actually hate her in this game. Okay, this is why when all this, this, this meta really started, people say, do not rotate at all. Okay? If I rotate, I will just aid her escaping. This is not really true because, of course, while rotating, I can stop her from rotating as well and so I will get a catastrophic break. For example, we're here, we're doing that slowly, we're here and I start to rotate, she wants to rotate. I bring this foot out and now I stop her rotation, but I keep rotating, this will be done. Okay, so actually this high legging escape is a really brave one and you should know what you do when you try it. You should be pretty safe in your knee here. Maybe you got a really straight leg and you feel like, okay, there's not much you can do. And even if I stop her from rotating, I will not break her, okay? But a lot of people do that. A lot of people feel safe enough to do that. So. If I'm able, I wouldn't, I can't do this right away, she will break it herself, I take it herself, just to take it, no, no, look, yeah, so this is bad, but as soon as we start rotating, I can bring this here, and now it's done, I already feel the pressure here, so rotating is not per se bad, okay, let's see, backside 50-50, for example, just turn around, please, turn around on your knees, on your knees, yes, so, <clears throat> For example, we have a backside 50-50. Here I can rotate as much as I want. It will break her and she can't do nothing because she cannot rotate the way that she wants to go. So here the rotational finish actually might be superior to, to the other one. Okay? You can just rotate down and this will be done. So there are a lot of situations 
where you can rotate and break her. Just remember, my rotation aids her escape. But as long as I can prevent this escape, the rotation of finish is weak. Second one would be the hip pressure or bridging finish. And this is the opposite. I'm not rotating the foot, but I'm trying to put her foot in place, really put weight on it, immobilize the foot. And what I'm doing now is just put pressure through her knee in the direction of the camera or even down to the ground. Okay, there's a Lachlan Giles video where he says, imagine this here is in place, immobilized, you can move it, and now someone comes and really stomps it to you. And this will be bad. <laughs> so, we keep this foot in place. Now just to show the perfect position, her knee is really bent here. I'm preventing her from turning the knee outside. This will kill my finish. And now I'm just starting to bridge into her or to close my thigh and put pressure here. And you see her hand is already rising and I have a lot of room to go. So this is not going this way and rotate, but this is keeping this in place and closing the knee or bridging it. We will go over those two finishes right after, right after this one. Um, in reality, it's always cool. Okay, if I can apply some rotation here and some force into this direction, it will be the best one. So it's usually not always only rotation or only bridging or hipping in. It's a combination of both and we're going over this right now. So for the actual break, there are two ways of doing it. One is, and this is what Lock and Giant still does, so it should be still good, is flaring my knees. You see? We will, look about, uh, we will look at the grip later, so don't worry. This is just about the knees now and my legs. So it's flaring my knees and hipping in. Okay, this is what will break her. So imagine her, foot, her toes go to the mat, her heel goes to my nose, like this, so I'm turning this. And what I do now is pressuring into the hip, okay? So this is a counter rotation. Her foot goes this way and her knee goes that way. And this will really cause some catastrophic break here if I get some good pressure here. So the flaring of the knee aids me, okay? Because here, now I can hit really hard. The, the best way to do this, and this is, I think, still one of the best finishes, is if I'm lying flat on my back, I bring my foot on her hip. You see, she, always, uh, she already raises her hip to relieve some pressure, and now I could bridge just right to the to the ceiling and it will be done. This would be the best way of applying it, okay? So this is more about immobilizing the foot, flaring the knee and now use the flaring of the knees to bring your hip forward and really go through the knee. Okay, always imagine going through the knee. There's no use in, let's say, her knee is a little bit turned out and now I'm going on top of the kneecap like a, like a knee bar. But there's no use. Okay, <laughs> she's still tapping because my... Grip might be good, but this is actually not the force we want to apply. We want to get go straight through the knee. So if her knee is turned, I have to adjust as well, and now this is much worse, okay? Other way around, if her knee, if her knee is turned in, turn, turn, turn. Now, I cannot just put pressure from, from the bottom to the top. I have to adjust, go around the leg as well, and now I can really start bridging it, okay? You see, her leg is already pretty straight, I still get the tap, but best case scenario would be this leg is really bent, my hips are really close, I immobilize the foot and now I start applying pressure into her knee. This will be the, let's say, knee flare finish where I use my knees and my feet foot over foot to really put some pressure here and use this to bridge through the knee or even go a little bit belly down. Okay, the second way to finish, and actually Eddie Cummings did this years ago. I saw it and was like, mm, it's not for me. Now, after a few years, I feel like this is by far the better finish. It's harder to, to apply, and there are more risks of her to, to, um, to spin out or something like this. But if you get it, it's um, much cleaner break. Why? Like I said, you rotate the foot this way. So even better than pushing her knee straight into the camera would be bringing her knee down to the mat. Okay, see, if her knee goes down to the mat and if her foot goes the other way, there's a lot of tension already running down her shin. The way we do this is a little more complicated than just hipping into her knee. 
it's, I'm using my thigh more or less right here. So not on the outside, but a little bit just on top of her kneecap, like here. And I'm using my thigh to close her knee down to the mat, okay? See, it's not hipping in straight, it's closing. And if I'm able, good thing again, foot over foot you can do both, you can flare or, now see, I really close my thigh. It's not this, I'm not flaring and hipping in, but I do the opposite, I'm closing this leg. Okay, this is a little bit technical because sometimes what happens is, I hip out too much, now she can straighten her knee, and now all I do is put pressure on top of her knee, okay, like a knee bar, but there's not enough control here to really get a knee bar. I can't do that. I really have to close her knee, okay? And sometimes, or this is, uh, most of the times the problem is my hip is too far out, so I have to scoot under again and now close my knee, okay? And if I have a good grip here and I can close my knee, this is a really catastrophic break. The downside is, it's easier for her to straighten her leg and rotate out like she just did. Now my heel hook is gone. And the other thing is, with flaring the knee, I'm really close to her. You see, if I close my knee, I'm already moving up and it might happen that her knee just slips off. So for this breaking mechanic, you have to have a good feeling of where to put the pressure and how not to lose her, okay? Because the worst thing that can happen is you have a really strong grip, you could break her, but you say, ah, oh, no, I know rotational finish with my knee is better, you do this, and her knee slips out, and it's good. Let's talk about the grips, and then we're done. So, the first thing is, you can finish someone with a really bad grip. So, what is a bad grip? A bad grip is her toes and my armpit, okay, and this is all I got. So, the problem here is, her foot can move pretty well. Can you move your foot? And the more her foot can move, the later the pressure will be at her knee. But there are a lot of situations where you just can't get a better grip, you're scrambling, she's trying to defend, and you will just end up with her foot in your armpit. Okay, it's okay. Just bring all your weight onto the foot so you can immobilize the foot as much as you can, and then you can apply both things we just talked about. You can either flare the knee and just push through her knee, like this, or I can close my knee and I should still be able to get a finish. Just remember this is really bad. She can maybe fight this well and turn her foot out and escape with her foot. Or the other bad thing is it takes some time until the pressure is in her. Let's take a better grip and this would be bringing my underarm parallel to her foot. So instead of being high in the armpit, I'm going actually a little more to my elbow here and then I'm cutting the corner with my elbow. Okay, so I'm not going back, but I really bring my elbow to my ribs in this direction. So I'm going here. You see now my arm starts to align with her foot and there's much more pressure in the knee already. Okay, just remember you will rotate her knee out doing this. So you see here, bad grip, I have good control over her knee. Now, if I rotate this out, her leg will straighten and I might lose her. So if you upgrade your grip like this, just remember you have to have pretty good control over her knee. But if you achieve all this, see I'm really closing the gap, I'm cutting the corner and there's already pressure, I didn't do anything yet. This is just the grip. So if I flare my knees now, or if I close my knee, I will get a tap right away. The last one, and this is for Craig Jones used to say this is the only one he, he does nowadays because otherwise nobody will tap. I don't think so, maybe at ADCC, not here in our gym. This would be the reverse figure four, okay? So, instead of taking my left arm to get under the heel here, I'm actually taking my right arm, get through and do a reverse figure four, okay? This will add a lot of momentum into this direction. So the good thing is, if I get this, this will be a really catastrophic fast break. I'm grabbing my own biceps and I'm turning my hand out again, okay? Because this, it looks stupid, but this closes the gap. See, here's a big gap, and if I do this and even rotate my fist out, this gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and there will be a lot of pressure. The downside is, like you see now, this rotates your knee even more. So right here I got nothing. Okay, so I would not recommend upgrading this from a normal 
sell position. If I'm here and I have a good grip, I keep it. I wouldn't try this right now because now I lost to knee line and everything is gone. But this is actually really good, for example, if you get some kind of scramble and you're here and you feel like, uh, here's not enough pressure I can apply. Now, with the leg being trapped and pointing in this direction, I can do this. You see, a uh, needed move and I get a really good grip and a really good finish here. But remember, if you're upgrading and cutting the corner, or if you're upgrading to a reverse figure four, your knee will always turn and you might lose it. So maybe do not do this from this position, but as soon as she starts spinning or something like this, now you see the more, more please. Here, I can easily switch, easily switch, because the knee is stuck in place and I get the best possible finish. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in. We will go over more and more. Just comment what you want to see. Like the video and remember there's a PayPal meeting. See you next time.